KBC English Service. Many thanks indeed for tuning in. Uh, my name is John Kagwa. Very good Tuesday morning. Uh, it's uh, the 26th day of January. Can, can you believe it? January is already out of the way. What's happening? The year will be done before we know it. Hope you keep track of uh, those aspirations for the new those resolutions. All right. Uh, time for a big conversation today. Start your day. The John Kagwa way. All right. Now, uh, in Kenya... It is estimated uh, that close to 40% of the population lack safe water. Remember the Constitution of Kenya 2010 guarantees water as a basic human right. Other than being scarce, water in Kenya is not distributed fairly, uh, with priority being given to uh, urban areas or the wealthy in rural communities that can pay for the services. Now, those in slums and remote villages often go without this precious resource. Scarce as it is, uh, some of those who have access to water have been known to be less than uh, economical with the resource. For instance, leaving taps running. On the big conversation this morning, we'll be speaking about the uh, management, uh, talk about regulation and equitable distribution of the scarce water resources uh, in uh, the country. What's your role as a water user in sharing and conserving the water resources? Uh, later, we'll also be hearing about an ongoing visit uh, to the important water catchment areas by uh, the Cabinet Secretary in charge of water, Eugene Omalu. I am delighted this morning to introduce uh, two of my guests uh, to the big conversation. I'm joined in studio by uh, Simon Wangombe and uh, Gladys Wekesa from the Water Resources Management Authority. Welcome to the big conversation on KBC English Service. Good morning and good to have you on the show today. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. You. Fantastic. Welcome. Now, I would be wise to you know begin this conversation by getting a, uh, to know a little more uh, about the Water Resources Management Authority. What is your role? What is the mandate? Let's start with Gladys. Ladies first, all right? <laughs> Take it away. Uh, thank you very, very much. <clears throat> Uh, as you've already said, that water resources is a very important resource in the country. Mm-hmm. And uh, with time, the resource is diminishing. So the government set up a water resources management authority to manage these water resources. Uh, the uh, line ministry is Ministry of Water and Re- Irrigation. Mm-hmm. And uh, in our constitution, water resources management is the responsibility of the national government. So the water resources management is done, is uh, the mandate is achieved through Water Resources Management Authority in collaboration with the Minister of uh, Irrig- Water and Irrigation. Mm-hmm. So I'll just uh, pass the mic to Mr. Wangombe to elaborate because he's the one who comes from the Water Resources Management Authority. All right. yeah. uh, thank you, Madam Gladys. Thank you, John, for welcoming us. Uh, as I said, uh, um, as you have heard, I'm Simon Wangobe from the Water Resources Management Authority. The acronym we are used to is WAMA, W-R-I-M-A. So our mandate can be uh, uh, put into four ma- broad categories. One is the collection of data and sharing with the public uh, for better uh, management of the water resources. Again, we also regulate and allocate water so that each, every one of us can get their share. We also protect the resource. Some of us are used to polluting the resource, the water resources, so it's also within our mandate to see that the water resource is not uh, polluted. Again, number four, we also manage disasters, especially floods, disasters that are brought about by the water resources. So these are the broad mandates that we have been given by the government. You know, one of your core functions that you've mentioned uh, right about now is that you ensure there is fair, uh, transparent and uh, participatory allocation of water so that everyone uh, who needs water can get uh, water for generations to come. I kindly elaborate uh, to us that bit on uh, participatory allocation of water and what, what exactly that means. Yeah, thank you. In allocation, we we bring the community on board. And normally we do through the Water Resource Users Associations, in short, the RUA. Uh, here, we also give them a chance to give us a, a feeling of what would happen if, for example, I abstract, if I draw so much amount of water, which, which I must em- emphasize before you do that, you have to apply for a permit to our offices. We have six regional offices, which are in uh, one is in uh, Nanyuki, the other one in Ebu, 
the other one in Machakos, the other one in Nakuru, the other one in Kakamega, and the other one in Kisumu. But then we have uh, 26 sub-region offices, which are, uh, and uh, so we know, um, let me put it clear that we manage our water resources along the catchments, along the flow of the water in a river, and also uh, the way the aquifers move or the, the water moves in the aquifer. So you must apply in those offices of ours. We get the application, look at it, involve the community through the Water Resource Users Association who give an input, they give a comment. Then from there, we give you the permit to draw the water. All right, uh, allow me to interrupt and uh, get, get more understanding of uh, what this authority is uh, uh, really engaged in because I read once that uh, there are no less than eight regional Water Services Board. Uh, uh, what exactly informed uh, the formation of uh, the Water you know, Resources Management Authority? Yeah, b- before the water sector reforms, which uh, came about and uh, were implemented uh, through the Water Act 2002, uh, most of the activities were geared towards the water service provision, provision of water. And in a way, we were not minding too much about the resource in its natural state. That is in a river or in a groundwater aquifer. So the government realized that we need to emphasize more on this. So the Water Resources Management Authority was created to specifically look into the water resource in its natural state. That is the allocation, uh, the permitting, and also the pollution aspect uh, to, so that we can get the water in its good quality and the uh, fair quantities. You know, one of the things that I've had you mentioned is on the quality of water and uh, the authority is responsible for managing, and you mentioned this uh, in the course of this conversation, you, you talked about uh, you know managing catchment areas, specifically said uh, catchment areas to ensure that the water sources are of good quality. How, how, how is this done? Mm. It's quite it's a bit tricky because you find some of us are polluting our water somewhere out there in, in in the country, and some of us even do it at night. And you find we are dumping waste, some even sewage into the river, into the water systems. So in a way, we we look at it uh, as I said. The, the water resource users associations assist us a lot because as a, a, an authority. Our staff might not be everywhere. Uh, again, we also encourage the public or anybody who wants to to have some discharge into a water source to have what we call an effluent discharge control plan. You show us how you treat that effluent until it comes to an acceptable level to be discharged into the water resource. Lift your soul. Lift your soul. The John Cargo way. This is a KBC English service, the breakfast show. Time for a continuation of a big conversation. This is KBC English service. All right, and uh, we're learning to understand more uh, about the Water Resources Management Authority. And I'm joined in studio today uh, by our friends. Uh, actually, we have Simon Wangombe, who's uh, from the Water Resources Management Authority. Also joining this conversation is Gladys Wekesa, who's the Director of Water uh, Resources uh, at the Ministry of Water. Uh, many thanks indeed, and uh, welcome back to this conversation. Thank you. Uh, Gladys, I'll be coming to you in not too long because I want to understand more about the Water Resources Use Association and you know, the integration and their role uh, in a bit. But I had engaged uh, Mr. Simon Ngomi uh, uh, not long ago on the catchment areas and uh, he had mentioned some, it can be challenging at times, but uh, Simon, just just curious, uh, what what achievements have you registered so far in terms of uh, managing water catchment areas? Yeah, thank you, John. Uh, we have uh, quite some areas that we have made some progress uh, and especially using uh, the public through the Water Resource Use Association, which I, I must emphasize is free for everyone to join so long as you register with them and you have an interest in that water resource. Uh, that is, perhaps your lad touches the river, that is a riparian user, uh, or maybe you are a water res- uh, resource user in one way or another, or you are just a stakeholder who is interested in that resource. 
So first and foremost, we have established uh, 600 and, uh, 604 water resource use associations with whom we do manage our catchments. Uh, where we look at the way uh, the, the issues are being handled, especially like uh, rehabilitating our catchment areas. Again, also compliance to the way people uh, get uh, the water from uh, the river. We have managed to give uh, four th about 4,000 uh, permits. Again, we have done what we call abstraction surveys. These uh, abstraction surveys assist us to understand a subcatchment such that we can know so and so is abstracting so much water from a resource and that way we can plan even for future for those who would like to to abstract to draw water from the same resource and also we look at the water balance so we we are still uh, moving along there and we have uh, managed to do 22 number abstraction surveys uh, again, uh, through RUAS, we have done uh, subcatchment management plans. That is a plan that uh, can uh, show, show, that shows us what do we want to do with this subcatchment on pollution issues, on uh, how we are going to rehabilitate our our catchment areas, which in some cases are quite degraded. Uh, again, here we have managed uh, and uh, three hundred and fifty-nine of them. Uh, again, the, the subcatchment management plans are also derived from what we call the catchment management strategy, strategies, which cover the whole catchment. And uh, we have uh, managed to revise six of them. Uh, so from these ones, that's where we can see the whole catchment in totality, the basins in well, totality. Fantastic. I want to rob uh, Gladys into this conversation and still staying with the uh, water resource users. Uh, for someone who's listening to this conversation and is wondering uh, about the importance of uh, having a water resource users association in their area, uh, what would you advise, you know, what would you advise them on when it comes to setting up their own association and the importance of that? Okay, the water resource user associations are very important uh, because uh, through the water reforms, we have realized that uh, you have to engage the community to make the water resources management more effective. Mm -hmm. And as Mr. Wangombe has illustrated, these are these are uh, groups that are formed from the communities, the water users like the the big irrigators, and also even the people who use the water, uh, like for generation of power, like engine and uh, also for fish for fishing for fisheries so it does not just engage people who use the water directly like for consumptive use but also those who use them for non consumptive use and the importance of uh, engaging the rulers is that these are people who own the resource we make them know that this is their resource and if so they have an interest in protecting it so by sensitizing them and telling them that uh, you need to manage it and use it in a sustainable way and that this is your resource and, and for you, your future generations, it becomes more effective in managing it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can say as a government and as a water resource use, uh, Rua, uh, Warma, we have succeeded in using the RUAS and we would encourage the Monangi to to register through the to come together and form like an association you, you it's just the normal way you come together you form an association but you have to uh, contact warma offices for advice on how to go about it and i think uh, this is the most m most effective way that kenya has succeeded in managing its water resources mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, there's mm -hmm. a whole lot of uh, positivity and positive feedback when we have this interrelation between Warma and, uh, uh, and the community as well, right? Yes, and uh, we, we take it like it's a country thing that each of us has a responsibility of managing our resources. Mm -hmm. And these are the, just the mechanisms that we have put in place to encourage the Monangi that uh, this is a resource that uh, we cannot take for granted anymore. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, I was just going through uh, the uh, Water Resources Management Authority website and uh, I saw that one of the challenges the authority encounters is the issue of uh, illegal abstraction. Now, before we get to the legal and illegal abstractions, perhaps I, we want to understand what is an abstraction. Uh, Ab abstraction is uh, drawing the water water from a, a source, like a river, mm -hmm. from a borehole, maybe yep. through from a groundwater through a borehole or through a well. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can maybe use a pump to pump this water, but for the normal drawing through a bucket, that's not uh, permitted. It's for free. But if you have to use a mechanized uh, 
a method like uh, pumping, then you have to ask for a permit from the Water Resource, uh, Water Resource Management Authority. Mm. Illegal abstraction is where you don't have a permit to draw the water. You, ha- you have set up uh, an equipment to pump the water from the source, but you don't have a permit. That's an illegal abstraction. You know, when it comes to anything illegal, there's going to be consequences, really. So <laughs> when you have this illegal abstraction, <laughs> what then happens? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. okay. Mm. Mr. Angombe. Uh, yeah, thank you, John. Yeah. Mm. Well, well, something illegal, you arrest you and we will take you, we will charge you. <laughs> that is what happens. But uh, sometimes it's a bit tricky because some of us use uh, 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 portable water pumps. They pump the better part of the night. In the morning, they pick their pump and they move away. Yeah. But again, we also try to understand our resource. And I say data collection is one of our key issues. And one of our achievements that we have made that we are still continuing to gain crowds we are having real-time data collection. That is, we have information uh, from the, the resource, like a river. We have uh, what we call divers inside the river, mm-hmm. a gadget that we will send our, that information to our resource. So if somebody is like pumping at night, upstream, we all realize in the morning from the, the information that we are getting in the office from, from our gadgets. Mm-hmm. So that is one of the major achievements that we have also made. Because uh, w- when one is doing it out there, we might not be everywhere to know. And we also call upon the public and uh, the community at large. If you know such people, please report them to us so that we can uh, have them uh, arrested. We also try to do some enforcement to try and get the illegal abstractors. And uh, as you correctly mentioned, our cabinet secretary, the Honorable Eugene Wamaro, will be visiting one of the areas where we have quite there some big challenges in water resources. That is the northern part of Kenya, which we refer to as the Wasonyiro North catchment. And uh, when we are talking about the Wasonyiro North catchment, it covers all the way towards Masabit, Madera, and uh, Moyale. And uh, we have also managed, uh, we are carrying out some studies. Uh, uh, some of us might remember some times back, it was announced that the Trukana Marsabit Aquifer is having huge quantities of water. And uh, the water can last the country for quite some time. But uh, this, the, the, the information was not verified. So WAMA is carrying out some studies. Uh, and we intend to share with the public. We want to verify the quantity and the quality of that water. Again, uh, through uh, drilling exploratory bohus, we explore what is uh, underground us and get the real, real information. So the CSO will also visit uh, that area and the commission that uh, drilling program. All right, and I want you to hold that thought because uh, we'll be coming to that uh, even towards the end of this program to understand more about that visit. Uh, but uh, before you digress further into the visit, uh, there's a whole lot more I need to understand about uh, these abstractions, uh, illegal at that. And I wanted to know the you know specific cases of. Uh, uh, the effects of illegal obstructions that what what are some of these effects that they have had on water bodies gladys okay some of the effects is that uh, if you uh, you put uh, uh, an abstract i mean a, um, abstracted point on a river and yet warama is not aware of this it will be very hard for us to plan for the allocation of this water because we need to understand how much do we have in total in order to issue permits this is what is called allocation so for us to plan, we need to understand how many permits have we allocated. Because every time you allocate a permit, you put a, you give someone a permit, you give as against an amount that they are supposed to abstract. So if, for an illegal abstraction, you don't have anything to gauge how much they are they are doing. So it affects the the planning of the allocation of this resource. At the same time, it also interferes with the normal flow, the best flow of the river, and this has an impact on the environment. On the environment, So they, they need to be controlled. The abstraction needs to be controlled. That's why Warma puts in place permitting system. Mm. Yeah. All right. And now, uh, one moment we could just uh, go into this. So you're from Warma. What's the authority doing or what ought to be done to ensure there's the reduction? You talked of enforcement, but is that enough, you know, reduction of illegal obstructions and to a large extent to ensure that uh, there's uh, equitable water distribution? Uh, uh, enforcement alone might not be enough. But, but before I go to that, I would like to add, mm-hmm. when we violate the reserve, when a resource goes beyond, well, the river is not flowing, that's what we are saying. 
uh, that's already a constitutional violation. So we have to be very careful how we handle this uh, because it's a right to have water in, uh, in, in the natural state when you need it. Mm -hmm. So well, the issues that uh, come about uh, the, the, the illegal obstructions sometimes are a bit tricky. And as I said, we, we, once we arrest you, we take you to court. But again, uh, we would also call upon the public also to assist us in this because it's a, it's a bit, it's a bit uh, tricky because somebody somewhere out mm -hmm. there doing the, 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 the works at night, the, the obstructions at night, sometimes it might not uh, be uh, us. We might not uh, get it. So we have put measures in place like collecting the data occasionally i said there's a real time data information so that if a reserve is being violated we can learn fast enough and and uh, understand is between this place and this place that way we can uh, we can look at that uh, specific we can zero in into that uh, specific area and get the culprits so these are some of the measures that we are trying to put in place but i must admit sometimes it's a bit tricky without, yeah, it's a bit, all right. without uh, the public uh, assisting us all right fantastic and uh glad uh, you know there, there has been uh, there has not been uh, equitable distribution of water uh, in Kenya. Like, like I said, uh, if you listen to my introduction a little earlier, priority has assuming been given to urban areas and uh, in the rural areas, especially remote areas, uh, water is a luxury that only those who have money to pay can pay for it and enjoy it. How then do you as a ministry go about ensuring that anyone who needs water gets this precious, precious, precious commodity? Okay, currently that is the situation that the water is not uh, uh, equitably distributed. But this one is also attributed to the nat nature, the, to nature, because uh, not the climate is varied. The country is uh, divided into various zones where we, we, we have uh, uh, semi-arid areas which w in which uh, water scarcity is very, is very common. And we have uh, like the, around the lake region, like Victoria region, where the there's a lot of rain. So naturally the country is varied. But uh, that does not discourage us from having, uh, distributing, having, and um, putting in place measures to, to have this uh, resource distributed equitably throughout the country. Currently the, country, the ministry is putting in place uh, storage uh, measures like dams, building several dams in uh, some of these arid areas so that uh, we can harvest the flood, uh, flood waters, especially when the rain, it rains. We can harvest this water conserve it and have it used during the dry season. Mm -hmm. So some of the, those are the, some of the measures that are putting being put in place. And also we're encouraging the, the, the Monainji to harvest rainwater. So those are some of also the measures that will be at, at local level but a bit, I mean, will be effective in the long run. Mm -hmm. uh, because the aim of the ministry is to make sure that uh, Everybody has water. Right. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, mm. Now, the Water Resources Management Authority, in conjunction uh, with the Ministry of Water and Irrigation, is and uh, this is something that uh, Mr. Wombe mentioned, uh, is planning a cabinet secretary tour mm. uh, of all warm uh, uh, regional areas. Uh, I know you you're involved heavily in this uh, yes. planning. Mm. Uh, what activities can the public expect from uh, the cabinet secretary uh, Eugene Wamalu's visit? Okay, there is a sh there are scheduled uh, visits, but he will begin with the Wasonyiro North catchment area. Uh, these are areas in Isiolo, uh, Samburu, like Kipia and Masabit. And uh, when he goes there, he'll be meeting the water resource user associations, and mostly these are community people. And uh, by meeting them, he'll be showing them that he has confidence in them and he'll, it will be kind of encouraging to them to conserve the resource. He'll be encouraging them to work very hard to conserve this diminishing resource. At the same time, in, um, in, in Nanyuki, he'll be visiting one of the uh, dams, Kiunjuri Dam, and uh, the objective of this visit is to take, to take note of the advantages of conserving water resources like I talked about uh, increasing our water storage so that we en 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 enhance our water uh, supply. And then he'll also visit uh, v uh, flood prone Isiolo. Uh, in this case, uh, he'll be uh, the Warma will be demonstrating to to the cabinet secretary and uh, his uh, the people who will be accompanying him uh, what he does in um, disaster management and in this regard uh, 
uh, what it's putting in place in flood management in Isiolo. He'll also be visiting Mars a bit, and uh, as Wangombe uh, said before, we have been carrying out a uh, groundwater mapping exercise. This follows the uh, Trukana a groundwater mapping exercise where, where we discovered a lot of groundwater and we are building on it to, to spread over uh, the rest of the country. And currently they are carrying out uh, this study in Marsabit and the CS will be there to do a groundbreaking uh, of the exploratory boreholes. Mm-hmm. So this is an activity that we raise awareness in what we are doing as a country. Mm, all right. Mm. And Mr. Ngombe, really excited with the CS visits to all these mm. regional areas of Walma, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, as uh, Gladys has put it, uh, we we want the CS to visit uh, all the areas in the country, starting from uh, the Wasunyiru, that is in January. February, he'll be in the other catchment. March, we shall be in the Rick Victoria South catchment. April, we'll be in the, Rick, uh, the Rift Valley. And uh, May, we shall be in the Rick Victoria North. Uh, while in June we will be in the Tana Cashment. As she has rightly said, we want also to, uh, the, uh, the people to understand, uh, to publicize what we are doing. Water resource management is quite a tricky affair. And sometimes we might not even uh, see as if one is doing something. Uh, and it's not like a project where you do a project and we see the water the following day and we are happy about it. But at that time, we are not minding where the resource is coming from. We may be getting depleted. We are not uh, understanding uh, the dynamics uh, where once we, we over pump from that resource. So he will also open an office in Nanyuki which we Wama has done so that uh, we can also uh, deliver the services to the public in a, in a, in a good way and uh, the emphasis is also as we are also have talked about the the drilling of the exploratory bohus uh, the community, the water resource user associations, because Wasonyiro is one of the areas we have major water conflicts. Sometimes you find a river is almost like drying up because of uh, the communities. But through the rules, the conflicts have been minimized and the flows have improved. Also, the water quality has been improved. And especially once we, we rehabilitate our catchments in that way, we get uh, our act right. All right. Now, as we bring this conversation to a conclusion, uh, how can Kenyans uh, participate in sustainable management of uh, water resources, uh, whether or not they're in these associations? Uh, we, we are to ensure that uh, future generations uh, can access resources, uh, specifically water. Okay. To begin with, I think <coughs> the when we put uh, RUAs in place, I think it's a more effective way. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, even if you're not a member of uh, the RUA, mm-hmm. We have the responsibility as a country to sustain our water resources because we can, maybe looking back as we were growing up as children, we had rivers flowing all over. Mm. But now if you go back to your village, those springs are dry. So that is an indication of a bad trend. Mm -hmm. So we need to reverse this trend Mm -hmm. as a person, as individuals, as groups. So our purpose here is to urge all all people, all the Mwanainji, to take it upon ourselves as individuals to protect this resource because where will we go when it disappears? Mm-hmm. We give an example of Nairobi River. It cannot be used. So if all rivers will come like Nairobi River, mm-hmm. then we'll have nowhere to go. All right. Yeah. Uh, what, what are those small, simple things that like a normal <laughs> Kenyan can do to preserve water? Okay, like not destroying the water sources. Mm-hmm. Like we, we have had people encroaching into water catchment areas. Mm-hmm. When they are told to, to get out of it, they, they become, they turn into political, you know. Yeah. So we want them to understand individually so that even as they come up to grow up as leaders, they can urge the common monarchy to respect the catchment areas. Mm-hmm. And also in, in, issue, in terms of pollution, there are small uh, places like towns where people just dump their waste into these rivers. Mm-hmm. And for the water com- for the water companies who discharge their sewerage waste into the rivers, please we urge them to stop. All right, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I mean, thanks uh, indeed. Um, we uh, have been speaking to uh, Gladys Wakesa, who's the director of uh, water resources at the Ministry of Water and Irrigation. Also during this conversation is our good friend. Uh, Mr. Wangombe, uh, Wangombe, Simon Wangombe is uh, from the Water Resources Management Authority. That's you call it, call it Wama. Wama My good Wama. friend uh, yeah. called Kevin asked me, can you quickly ask Mr. Wangombe to 
tell me what an aquifer is what an aquifer you've been using that word aquifer mm, yeah uh, thank Aqu- you aquifer quick one as you have the conversation uh, yeah th- thank you john an aquifer is simply the storage of water underground yeah. so when you drill you strike uh, it's like a pot holding water underground yeah. so you drill from the surface yeah. strike water from the ground it's uh, as simple as that all right so thank you for that yeah. okay mm-hmm. i hope you had that right fantastic now all right uh, we're from uh, Master Drew the water it's customary on this show uh when i have guests on the show i always try to find out what is that motivating factor that you as an individual uh, drives you when you wake up in the morning to go out and do what you do what motivates you when challenges come your way how are you able to deal with this because of uh, y'all at one point or the other will deal with challenges that start with gladys what what motivates you and everything okay thing? what motivates me is uh, when i go out there and i make i can make a difference that uh, I, i just don't talk about challenges but i look at uh, uh, challenges as a, a, a something i can solve and uh, if, if I, ha- i have a chance to solve a problem then that makes me happy mm-hmm. yeah uh, what about mm-hmm. when challenges come you how do you do that um i know that uh, i'm strong and i can face them and i for me nothing is impossible mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. it's a belief that you <laughs> it's know. a belief that there's always a solution for everything uh-huh. yeah so uh, you don't you don't give up until you try yeah, yeah. i like yeah. that one <laughs> don't give up till you <laughs> try uh-huh. all right uh, mr simon ngombe <laughs> <laughs> what motivates you to wake up in the morning oh really? uh, yeah thank you when uh, what motivates me is when i wake up i move out there knowing it's me i'm responsible for this nobody else is doing this other than me so i take it head on knowing the solution will come from me and not looking at it as uh, something that is impossible it might be challenging and uh, finally i know how hard it hard it mm. yes. uh, what when will you encounter hurdles along your uh, work maybe family whatever it is uh, and challenges will come so uh, some have spoken to some guys on the show some just you know seek the divine help i don't know what you do when you face these challenges <laughs> yeah thank you divine help is always there yeah. so first of all first and foremost you must pray in the morning and yeah. ask god to assist you mm-hmm. but again remember it is us so whatever you are doing you might imagine it's a small in a small way but i don't think that is the thing do it do it perfectly do it to the best of your ability mm-hmm. knowing we are banking on you even you out there as a listener remember whatever whatever you are doing is is we are depending on you to do it and do it perfectly because if each one of us did whatever they are supposed to do and do it right then we can move on the broadcaster john here does it right mm-hmm. and then myself once i go there to manage the resources i do it right yep. then everybody will so, be uh, happy we all do it right in a different way yeah. right yeah. Yeah. yes <laughs> fantastic i like yeah. that one yeah. Yeah. all right really thanks uh simon ngombe from the water resources management authority uh gladys okay as well uh, who's uh, the director of water resources at the ministry of water and irrigation thank you so much for making time to come and have this conversation thank i know you. you're gearing up for that cs visit i hope it's going to be a, su- a successful one yeah. right okay. hope so. Right, fantastic. We are very thankful for hosting us. And many thanks. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.